My name is Patrick Tissiano. I am a system power management expert working, working for the Belibre company, a embedded Linux engineering company, doing many things uh, from development, architecture, and uh, upstreaming. So uh, what we'll, uh, be, we will be discussing during the next hour or so is about uh, power management instrumentation, what is needed, why we need it, and many other topics. So let's uh, fasten our seal beds and get started. Uh, the agenda of this presentation, um, pretty simple. Uh, we'll start with a short intro in introduction explaining the problem. Uh, and then we'll try to give some answers to the following questions. Uh, why do we need uh, power instrumentation? What do we need to do power instrumentation? Uh, among all these uh, elements, uh, what's uh, already available today and what is missing. We'll conclude, uh, talk about what's next, and then uh, it's, it's going to be open for questions. Okay, so what's the problem? Why power management instrumentation is needed? Uh, a major issue the Linux community is facing regarding power management is the lack of power management da of power data, data and power instrumentation. Usually the development boards we are all using uh, are missing the power probes, so we, we are unable to measure various uh, power rails. Uh, if ever we have those probes, uh, still the power measurement equipment is pretty expensive, uh, making it not affordable for many people. And the uh, last point, last main point, issue or issue, is that uh, we don't have data sheets about oops, what? Okay. Uh, we don't have any power data or any power data sheet we can use um, about the SOCs or the, the platform we are using explaining how much power is consumed over time. Unfortunately, this situation is not really expected uh, to change in the near future uh, because it is believed that it is not of interest of many people, only a group of people working on power management. Whereas actually the situation is completely the opposite. Everyone's concerned uh, from device driver development to application development. Uh, this situation is somehow forcing us. Yes? Okay, okay. Um, so the situation is not expected to change. Uh, the dev boards missing prop points, um, the, the lack of power data, uh, data sheets. Uh, and exp expensive uh, power equipment. Um, all this is forcing us to um, use custom or ad hoc uh, techniques and, uh, and equipment, and uh, everyone is doing the same over and over again. It's not changing. I've been doing that for ten, more than 10 years. But each time there is a new platform, we deal with the same problems. So that could be a bad picture, but actually if not much can be do, done on the hardware side, because it is not in our hands, on the software side, we, are still a, we may still be able to, to add some power instrumentation and provide standard tooling, tooling sorry, that could definitely help. So the first question I'll try to cover is why do we need power instrumentation? So the main purpose is, well, I think one of the most important holy grail we have is about being able to enable dynamic uh, power measurement, or actually it would be estimation, of, of the platform uh, in terms of power consumption and battery life without the need of any external power measurement circuitry. So ultimately, we'd like to, to cut into some CSFS files and have the power consumption without having to add something some equipment. This way, any developer anywhere in the world could debug power management and do power optimization with no cost. Another purpose, the number two purpose, is about uh, helping people detect and, and debug power leaks. Uh, by power leaks, uh, uh, we mean um, unnecessary devices that are left on or into some power consuming states uh, and 
So th this increase the power consumption, reduce the power, the battery life of the device, um, and that has to be tracked down. So f some examples, some running clocks, some uh, running devices, uh, inadequate uh, clock rates, or inadequate CPU uh, frequencies, or some CPU idle states that are not being entered, or some regulators that are powered on, or even some GPIOs that are leaking because they are in a wrong state, they are not left in high impedance state. Example like that. Yeah. For, people, for people used to do power debugging, that's the regular issues we face. By, by providing some standard tooling for power instrumentation, we could enable more, uh, we could enable the, the capture of system power trace and we would be able to uh, post-process it. So for instance, extract uh, statistics. Uh, say you have a trace of power consumption and power states transitions, you could process it in some way and then extract statistics like how much transition there have been, how much time the CPU spent in that given state, how many devices were used, etc., etc. So that would be uh, super efficient for power debugging. And that would also enable uh, the automation of power regression. Uh, by that, I mean that uh, these, these tools could be integrated into some continuous integration uh, frameworks like Kernel CI, Power CI, Fuego. And uh, we would run those, uh, we, would cap cap sorry, we would capture traces, power traces, analyze it, uh, extract statistics, and we would be able to uh, uh, to compare with previous uh, builds automatically. Uh, another purpose that may not be, that may not come immediately in our mind is about uh, power modeling. Uh, for those that who have, uh, who are working with uh, SOC vendors, you may know that usually we try to, wh when the vendors are uh, designing the next gen platform, they are trying to modelize, to model the, the power consumption of the device given the existing platform and some updated power numbers. Uh, and usually they are using some very uh, complex tools that try to reproduce what the hardware is or will be. Uh, in that area, actually, if we are capturing uh, a power trace, a Linux power trace, uh, with all the power states and transitions and clock rates, etc., etc., we could just provide this trace with the, the updated power data and we would have the power consumption of the next gen platform with almost no cost. And we could also imagine by doing that uh, compare platforms to uh, compare platforms to platforms directly with the same trace. And why why this is possible is also because we don't expect uh, a lot of code to change from one generation to another. Meaning that if the peripheral in the SOC has not changed, the driver will be the same, and the app will probably behave mostly the same. And I think also in a way it will be uh, uh, more accurate than as any other external uh, software uh, modeling uh, tool we could use because it's a real capture running on, running on real hardware. Another holy grail, uh, at least for me, is uh, enabling closed loop uh, power management policies. You may know that the power management policies, so the CPU free governors, uh, CPU idle governors that are running today in the Linux kernel, are working in an open loop. They are typically sampling various uh, um, data points in the system and based on some heuristics, takes decisions. But actually, it's never uh, measuring the impact of these decisions and it doesn't know whether or not the decision was good or, ba or bad. Now, if you think that, if you imagine that the uh, policies are able to uh, get some power estimate of the platform, then it's now it's a closed loop and it could refine its decisions and update it uh, dynamically. That could open the door to some very advanced uh, policies, including uh, 
uh, self-learning policies, uh, deep learning techniques. So ultimately, eventually, someday we may, we may not have any more to do some uh, fine tuning, uh, heuristic fine tunings by hand. We would just let the policy learn the platform and that would be done. That, that's a dream. Okay, so if we ever want to enable power instrumentation, what do we need? Uh, first, obviously, we need uh, software power probe points. By that, I mean uh, something in the kernel on the, on the platform that will uh, notify us whenever there is a power, uh, power, uh, power state transition. Sorry. Uh, so this includes uh, regulator uh, transitions, power transitions, clock transitions, power domain, CPU frequency, CPU idle, device state change, GPIOs, everything that, uh, that is uh, related to power management. And those events, obviously, to have a, a, a trace uh, should be timestamped to be useful. Um, what else? Uh, that's the tricky point. We need power consumption data, which means, uh, by that I mean how much power a device consumes in a given power state at any time. So um, it's some sort of database we, you would uh, poke with a, a device name and it would and a device state and it would give you the power consumption. This includes uh, uh, the SOC internal peripherals, so the GPU, the CPU, the RAM, uh, I2C controllers, I2C peripherals, uh, UART, GPIO, everything but also the, uh, all the other peripherals that are embedded in your platform but not part of the SOC. LCD display, wireless controller, uh, flash devices, sensors. Uh, I, give, I give here some example about, okay, let's say the UART device. We would like to know that the UART device consumes 5 microwatt when it's uh, suspended and 100 microwatt when it's active. Same thing for an EMMT uh, device. Then last point I, I would like to highlight is about uh, power analysis tool. It's uh, super cool to have all this data, the trace, the power consumption data, but what do we do with it? How do we handle and uh, analyze all this data without uh, a tool that is doing the job for you? Um, we don't want to be in this situation like uh, reading uh, X values from registers and decode and open a TRM or a data sheet to understand, understand what's happening. We want something in a, uh, formatted in a human way that, would, that we can uh, easily understand and we can use to highlight all the, the things we want to. So these tools would post process the power trace and extract some statistics eventually plot the trace uh, and other things. Uh, this tool shall be uh, generic and cross-platform because if we want a standard uh, tool to be standard, it has to, to be generic and cross-platform. Uh, as a note, uh, some vendors already provide some custom tools of their, of their own. For instance, Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon Profiler uh, or Google's Android SysTrace. So they are both requiring Android and ADB. <coughs> so we cannot use it for mainline, for instance. If we, we just need a, if we are just running a busy box system, it's not useful. Okay, so among all these ele elements, um, what's available today? Is there anything that we can use right away? <laughs> the good thing is that yes, there is something. That's F-Trace uh, power events. So the kernel through the uh, F-Trace uh, framework is actually already providing us all the uh, probe points we've been uh, highlighting previously. Runtime PM events, uh, clock management events, CPU power management events, uh, the suspend re platform suspend resume events, uh, regulator events, uh, GPIO events, everything. We, we have all the data we need. And we can also, if 
something's missing, it's quite easy to, to add. And if we want to do something custom for a platform, we can also easily do it. So how do we uh, collect uh, power events with F-Trace? Well, uh, first we need to enable uh, F-Trace uh, tracing in the kernel config file. So it's the two flags listed here. Then you build your kernel and that's it. You just need to, to mount debugfs debug and that's it. Uh, now you can, by uh, doing some echo and cat into uh, CSFS uh, debugfs entries, get everything you need. So for instance, you just need to do a echo one to uh, this uh, power enable uh, file and uh, the, the power events starts to be tracked immediately. So you may need to empty the trace buffer first before collecting the trace and then enable, uh, enable the tracing. So in trace underscore own file, you, can, you echo one in it and that's done. You have your trace. Uh, the, the, um, the impact on performances and, and power is, uh, I would say, reduced to the minimum we can do with a software solution, meaning that it's going to be some uh, print K in the uh, in, in a RAM uh, buffer. So it's not supposed to impact any uh, power transition. So as a note, uh, I, I, for educational purposes uh, here, I have used the eco uh, technique, but actually there is a binary tool called trace-cmd that is doing all the, all the job for you. Here is an example of a F trace with a power events enabled. So if I point, I don't, I'm not sure you may read it, but uh, there, are, there are some CPU freak events here, some CPU idle events here. So that's a trace I collected on a, a real platform. And the idea behind this trace is that let's write some tools that is able to read this and do the job for us, or partially at least. Uh, here this slide, just a few references for those of you that would be interested into knowing more about F-Trace. And that's it for the available uh, elements. Uh, now let's talk about what's missing. Obviously the power database, I call it a database. Uh, so that's the power consumed by a given device in a given state. Uh, we are lacking a lot of uh, public da data like this today, but it is critical obviously for uh, our job. We may get some battery life for some given use cases, uh, for instance, for smartphones. Usually we have uh, battery, li battery life data, but that's all, and it's not sufficient. We'd like this database to be uh, generic and multi-platform so that uh, we have a standard tool that is able to post-process it. So I gave a very uh, basic and dumb example here. It's just a, a text file with uh, describing uh, the device, the name, and uh, the power consumption in uh, given states. Uh, and the idea is that, that we could have a tool that would take the F trace, trace, take this data and put everything together and uh, draw us the, the power consumption. You may know for people uh, dealing with Android that it has a similar uh, uh, power database already. It's called uh, Power Profile <coughs> and it's an XML file uh, defined the link I have highlighted here. So Android is already doing that. Uh, it's not complete, but it's already a good start. And this is uh, helpful for Android to display all the battery statistics uh, you may find in the settings uh, application. So on the previous slide, I described uh, a, a simple text file in user space in, in the file system. But actually, if you think a little bit more, device tree could be a, a good candidate as well to store this data. Why? Device tree purpose number one is to describe the platform to the kernel. So 
more or less it's his job to describe the power consumption or to store this information. It's already there. It's generic, stable, multi-platform. It is mandatory when you create a new platform, it is mandatory to use device tree. And for the existing platforms, they are being converted sl uh, slowly, but still they are progressively, progressively getting converted. And what would it mean in terms of implementation? Maybe just uh, as a new attribute to be added to, device attri to the existing attributes. So uh, here is an example. Not saying it's the right way to do it, but you have your device tree file, your DTS file, the existing devices with the existing uh, attributes. And for instance, for the UART, we could add the information of the active power and suspended power. And given that, we would be able to, if we have this information for all the devices of the platform, then we, have the, we can rebuild the power consumption of the platform almost for free. The good thing about having, having this information stored in the device tree is that it may be reused for other purposes than uh, power instrumentation and also uh, at runtime. So for in first example, F-Trace, with F-Trace we could add this information to the, the logs and the kernel power management policies, they would be able to, get, to use it and so take better decisions. And again, we would enable some more uh, closed loop heuristics with uh, self-learning policies or deep learning algorithms. Um, device tree is also accessible uh, from user space, which means that it's not this, uh, it's not uh, blocking us from developing a user space tool uh, if we ever put this information in device, in device tree. Um, I would say that the downside may be that it may be more difficult to maintain as part of the kernel because it would then involve more people, uh, more discussion. Uh, and uh, the question could be how would maintainers would validate the, the power data. Okay, uh, what else is missing? So let's say we have the, uh, the, tra the power trace available. We have uh, the power database. Well, we need tools to decode, uh, to descramble all this to, uh, for us. So I would imagine a tool, a regular command line tool that would take the power trace, take the database and reformat all this for our usage. It could generate automatically uh, power statistics and it could reformat the power trace uh, for standard poly, uh, plotting tools. Obviously, it, it could be a multi-platform. Um, and it could run, the good thing is that it could run on the target device or on a host PC. That would be super useful for uh, regression tracking, continuous integration and automation because that could run automatically on build servers and uh, test reports could be published. And we could imagine that the build server could also uh, notify people uh, whenever there is a power regression, highlighting what changed compared to previous version. Uh, quick example, you give the trace and the power data to, to some tool and it gives you immediately um, the minimum power consumption or, or for the given trace, the mean, the max, the average value, the time the CPU, uh, the average CPU loads, the time the CPU spent in various states, the, uh, the, C the CPU frequencies used, the active device count, etc., the, 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 the total number of power transition, etc., etc. That would be super useful to, for comparison. Because let's say, ultimately, uh, someone would be able to say, okay, this is the optimum uh, configuration for power of my platform. He could save this uh, data, and then every day, uh, continuous integration servers would compare with the target goal, and then highlight where it's good, where it's wrong. Uh, 
uh, that's not sufficient. So that's a static analysis of power trace. Uh, but for us human, uh, usually we need something more visual. Uh, and we need to understand all the dynamics of the platform. So for instance, people using kernel shark for uh, performance uh, tracking uh, can clearly understand this. So it would be very interesting and helpful for us to have some sort of uh, power chart that would highlight all the power states on your platform. Not, not just the power, but the power and what was, why we have this much, uh, that much power at that time. So I, I sketched a quick <laughs> uh, example of a, pl a smart plotting tool for power instrumentation. On the top, on the uh, upper uh, part, we have various uh, devices and the states, the power states of these devices over time. So CPU load, uh, CPU speed, uh, the number of CPU that are active over time, uh, clock rates, uh, device power states, active device count, so the number of devices in your system that were active at a given time, over the, and some GPIU values. So that's an example. It may be even more. There might be other useful data to process, but that was just an example. So here are the, the different state power state transitions over time. And below, the corresponding uh, power, tra uh, power consumption trace that has been estimated by our tool. So I would say that we could have this very easily today. But what I find, I would say the next step, is that if I could point to a given data point on the, on the, the power uh, uh, trace, uh, and it, tells me, it, it, it would tell me immediately what has changed, uh, why we have that much power consumed here. So it would display the power consumption at that <coughs> point of time. And then what has changed? Well, OK, now we know that we had this rush because the GPU got turned on. So we enable the clock of the GPU. We have uh, enabled one CPU. And uh, that's the running applications. You may know it. They are a little bit popular. So. Uh, if I point another, if I ever point another da data point here, why it is going down? Well, because the the, the GPU is g is getting relaxed, typically. We don't have this today, and I think if we were able to provide this tool, that would be super useful for us because we would know immediately what are the device states at any time, and why uh, we have a, a power peak or or not. OK, so uh, let's try to summarize what has done, just been presented. On the bright side, uh, the, the great Linux kernel has all the infrastructure in place for uh, power instrumentation. We have F-Trace that is tracking for us all the power uh, events, the scheduling events, and the performance events. It's easy to add new power events if anything is missing. And the tracing, perform, uh, the tracing impact is limited. On the dark side, uh, we are missing the power consumption data. And it may be hard and long, long to get. And uh, we are missing, um, I would say, the, the post-processing tools. Regarding the power consumption data, it's OK. Uh, I mean, we could deal without it, meaning that we could still rely on some external equipment to measure the power consumption. And so we'll need to do some uh, um, uh, work to synchronize the, the, the power consumption trace uh, captured by our ex external equipment and the uh, F-trace uh, data. But that is doable. So the next step is probably to uh, collect feedback from the expert in the room and uh, during the ELC 
to sense if there is an interest for that and if it's a good direction to go, to follow. Uh, do more work on the power database part. Uh, try to decide between device tree uh, or a regular user, user space database. Uh, that, that's going to take some time. Developing the uh, post-processing tool may not be that difficult, uh, particularly the, the first one that is just reformatting the trace. That should be uh, quite easy and quick to get. And then the, chart, the plotting app uh, may take a little more time. And ultimately, we would like these tools to be the de facto uh, uh, standard tool for power debugging. OK, that was it. And now, uh, please ask for questions. Yes? Wait. <laughs> So it seems there needs to be more states than <coughs> active and suspended for each device. Yes. And for th if that data gets added, then we should also add data describing what um, SOC power states that device <coughs> might block. Because that way you can, um, with the tracing data, you would see the blocking devices also for entering deeper I idle states, which we are completely missing right now. Yes. And it would be done in a generic way that that way. Yes, clear, clearly we may need to add more power events to F trace. Uh, I guess what, what we have today is already good for get things started and then we'll upgrade and uh, I mean I didn't mention that a lot in the presentation but there are many challenges uh, in this uh, if we ever want to get to this state uh, like getting all the power data making sure we don't miss any um, um, uh, any information and that, that the, to get a very accurate or as accurate as possible uh, uh, power chart. Uh, there are many challenges. Um, but maybe we can, maybe, I mean, if we don't get something super perfect, maybe still we can get something that helps us. Yes? Sorry. When, oh. One interesting thing with uh, if you had a power database mm -hmm. is also to think about peripherals. So if you plug in a USB drive yeah. and that thing never ever goes to sleep, that can block the whole system from going deeper. And um, so your power database either has to know about a whole lot of things perhaps or, well, you probably yeah. can't build it into the hardware to, uh, to tell it at runtime. But yeah. something like device tree, which maybe is fairly static, could be tricky there. Because mm. uh, you don't even know what might be plugged in later. Mm. Um, the other thing is, I think, uh, besides a trace tool, uh, a live tool like PowerTop basically would be very cool. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you are absolutely right. <laughs> One thing to point out is, I think you said that there's no, <coughs> on most devices, there's no way to measure the power, but I think there actually is. Uh, there's smart battery. And so smart battery can usually report the current or wattage depending on, on how you have it configured. And it's really rough because it's just full system power. But with that, you could sort of figure out a lot of the things you're looking for. So you could turn on a clock and then see how the overall system uh, power draw got adjusted. It would take a long time and it's really rough. So you'd have to you know, run it for 20 minutes in one state and 20 minutes in the other state and then figure out how much power was taken out. But you could eventually figure it out that way, um, especially bigger power draws. So you, you are right for the, the most power consuming devices of the, of the platform. But uh, for very tiny peripherals like a UART or whatever, it's probably not possible to get it from the battery because it's going through so many uh, stages uh, like, if the consumption is 5 micro right, what? Yeah. there is no way you know it at the battery. Uh, it's completely, uh, it comes completely disappeared. But for the, the big ones, yes. Excuse me? It might not be worth it to model such small power drives. Like Potentially, yeah, yeah. Depends. Maybe it depends on the size of your device. It, it depends on the use case. For instance, if you are tracking a very low power use case, like 
either or when the platform is suspended, then it becomes critical. It's, it's a matter of scale. But, it, but you're right. You're right. We were able to do some useful stuff on like a big little system, right? Just seeing what the power contribution was on the big versus the little. And, and so that, that can be used. I think an interesting question is um, whether uh, everyone kind of cooks up their own stuff to, to figure out uh, you know, the power consumption when you're, when you're measuring at the battery of different components. And I wonder if there's interest in trying to do like a, some generic way of, of gathering that data and trying to figure out the deltas between test runs and, and isolate power consumption of individual components. So. Yeah, and don't forget that ultimately we don't want to do this job. We want the SOC vendors and platform vendors to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I have a couple of points for the so for the offline uh, processing of uh, the uh, trees. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as part of the energy we are shelving development, we develop tools that actually parse uh, a trees, and then we do basically a, a statistic analysis. On top of it, we, for example, we already have uh, no frequency analysis, uh, okay. CPU other states analysis, and all this thing. We actually have some prototype uh, code that actually tries to uh, compute a power estimation of from from a tree. So basically, what you already talk okay. about, we probably have already something. Okay. Those tools are already available on GitHub, so they are open okay. source. We can, okay. I guess, I mean, people can okay. contribute. And we so can then after, those. if you can point me to of it. Course. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're called Lisa and Trappy. They're okay. on GitHub, but I'll okay. give you links. Okay. And uh, actually, another point was on the online instead analysis. So uh, actually, because yesterday I uh, followed the nice presentation by Tom Zanussi from Intel. He's working on, uh, well, he has uh, work on uh, creating these histograms uh, for latency tracing. Uh, the nice fact that the thing is actually able to actually do deltas of events during the trace and then uh, maybe trigger events when, uh, I don't know, a certain threshold is actually uh, overpassed. So I guess ideally we would, could actually do the same by looking at, at uh, I don't know, power consumption. So yeah. maybe you can define like your threshold of power consumption. Sure. And then when you do a regression test, you can actually say, okay, if I, on a certain time, I cross the threshold, please uh, uh, give me like a trace of what happened in the last, I don't know, mm -hmm. couple of seconds, so then yeah. I can go back and back what, what happened. Yeah. That's yeah. another thing. So, uh, Patrick, you mentioned uh, model uh, storing the um, uh, power consumption uh, in device tree, and I know there was some effort to to do that for CPU nodes. Uh, did that? What, what what happened with that? Uh, so currently, uh, what we have in mainline is the uh, capacity. So how much capacity the CPUs at the different states can actually give, and the next step will be to add power to that thing. Uh, it seems, I mean, we discussed this thing at the last uh, Linux numbers. It, it seems to be positive about it. Actually, the capacity thing was the most controversial bit because it's not, I mean, it is uh, something physical, but it's not like power. So the, the power aspect should be probably easier to, to get done. So, I mean. Using that as a basis, you know, we could yeah. start to look at other devices in the yeah. system as well and maybe reuse the mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks. Uh, I was from, no? Okay. Okay, no more question? Okay, thank you so much.